This is the Ebola virus. When it infects humans, it causes a lot of nasty symptoms. Fever, vomiting, bleeding, and potentially death. But Ebola is tiny. It's a thousand times smaller than a human hair. It's a virus, just a protein tube with a little bit of genetic material stuffed inside. So how does Ebola make people sick? And how can we track its spread across huge distances and large populations? Understanding how Ebola spreads between people and changes with time helps us predict and stop its spread. Like all viruses, Ebola is only able to reproduce by hijacking living cells. First, Ebola enters a human cell and releases its DNA. It's this very DNA that will help us understand Ebola. DNA is a long, stringy molecule with an incredible ability to store information. Four different molecules attach to DNA's backbone, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. They're like a four-letter alphabet. By ordering these four molecules in different sequences, all living things can use DNA like an instruction manual for building and operating cells. The molecules on this strand of DNA hold the instructions for building more Ebola viruses. Ebola's DNA has now tricked the hijacked cell. The cell's own machinery begins to make copies of the virus. Eventually, the cell dies, releasing thousands of new Ebola viruses into the body, which go on to infect and kill more cells, repeating the whole process. Just like a photocopy of a photocopy will have mistakes, all this copying introduces errors, also called mutations, within Ebola's DNA. As Ebola spreads to different groups of humans, different mutations accumulate in each group. We can use these differences to understand how Ebola is spreading. The more differences we find between two groups, the longer ago they split. Think of it as retracing the Ebola family tree. This is exactly what researchers did early in the Ebola epidemic in West Africa. They took samples of the virus from the region, read off the DNA from each sample, and compared the differences. The results helped the medical community to better understand how Ebola was spreading. It also helped to see if medical tests, which identify Ebola based on its DNA sequence, were still useful in the outbreak. This success in tracking and understanding Ebola proves that genetic research can change the way we deal with disease outbreaks. By reading the DNA of future diseases, we might be able to understand where they come from and how we can treat them.